you so much, everyone. This will be a very, very, very short presentation and just a little introduction and a, and a fun activity for all of us. So if you've been sitting for a long time, you're getting a little antsy, we're gonna, we're gonna play something. We're actually gonna practice something together that can help you with anxiety, an actual experiential component. It's gonna take a minute or two just to introduce it. I'd also just like to say um, the unbelievable humility I feel being up here right now Dr. Norman Blumenthal was actually my pastoral counseling uh, professor when I was in Smicha at NYU, and he taught us as, as Smicha students, as rabbis, how to be good counselors, good listeners to people in our community, and it was at that moment that I decided that I would like to go and pursue a degree in psychology as well, much to my wife's dismay. Um, <laughs> so it's humbling to be on the stage with him as well as Dr. David Rosmer, who was my supervisor at the Center for Anxiety, and um, thank you so much to everyone for coming out, and especially to our presenter. If we need more events like this, more courageous individuals to speak up, and to be open, and to break the stigma, and mental health. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know it's late, and I don't know how many of you look like you live very close by, but I live in Long Island, and um, by show of hands, how many people are familiar with ever taking the Long Island Railroad, the LIRR? Okay, great. All right, good. So, when I was a kid growing up in Long Island and used to take the LIRR to Manhattan, I never noticed the, the names of the lines, the, name, the, links, the names of the tracks that they meant. For instance, there's a lot of these funny names like Concoma, Oyster Bay, what are some other lines people are familiar with? Jamaica, Jamaica, obviously, Far Rockaway, Long Beach, Montauk, etc. I'm very used to hearing those names announced over and over again. So I never understood why it's given a name. And then one day it dawned on me. The name of the line is the last stop. Right? The last stop at Montauk is Montauk. The last stop on the Far Rockaway line is Far Rockaway. That's how they name the lines. And I think this is a great analogy for how anxiety works. What the curse of anxiety is. The curse of anxiety is that even though you're sitting in Jamaica Station, in your head, you're in the last stop. You're already in Montauk, you're already in Long Beach, you're already in that last place, that scary, worst case scenario that you think is gonna come true, even though you're not. You're just sitting in Jamaica. It takes you away from the present. It takes you out of where you are, when you are, and it takes you to some reality that doesn't exist yet that may not even happen. And that's really the curse of anxiety. It doesn't just take away your future, it takes away your present. So one skill that has been very popular lately is called mindfulness. And mindfulness very simply is just paying attention on purpose to the moment, being present. And that's very hard. So for instance, if you ever got the text, the worst text to get is, hey, Call me when you have a sec, I just want to talk to you about something. All right? Especially from a parent that I can't go a whole work day if, you know, if it's from a, a parent or a family member, I gotta go right away. Because I'm thinking about the worst case scenario. So how do you deal with those situations? So in truth, mindfulness sounds like a very new age, very kind of you know, hippy dippy treatment and, and movement. But really we all practice mindfulness every day, we just don't realize it. So anytime you're doing something where everything else in the world just fades away, nothing else matters, you're only focused on what you're doing right then in that moment, that's mindfulness. And that's why we love it so much. So for example, what are some things that people love to do that when they're doing it, they're totally in the moment, they're totally focused. What are some things that people actually like? What was that dancing? Testing, test taking, it's true. Doing maybe puzzles, exercise, playing music, cooking, learning, art. Those are all things that people do because they feel in the moment, they feel totally present. So those are good things to do, but sometimes you don't have that opportunity. You're sitting on a train, you're sitting in a class, you're sitting at a shopping meal, and you get a panic attack, you get an anxiety attack. So that's where mindfulness comes in. And specifically, using the five senses, using your sense of sight, smell, or taste, vision, focusing on one, and luckily there are many senses around us all the time, focusing on one sense at a time, 
can help you be present and be in the moment and really take your head out of the clouds from what you're thinking of and back down to reality. And that's why it feels good. So I want everyone to take a moment and think from one to 10 how anxious you're feeling right now. 10 being a full-blown panic attack, which hopefully no one is feeling in the room right now. And one is so chill, you're so relaxed, you're basically, you know, asleep, yeah. So from one to 10 in your own head, just think of a number. And we're trying to do something which I would do privately in an office, one-on-one -on -one in a small space. And we're trying to get a lot of Jews in the room to be quiet all at once for a long period, uh, for 30 seconds. It feels like a long time, but it's not really a long time. And then we're going to check in afterwards to see if that number changed or not. So what I'm going to do is just to tell everyone what the instructions are. It's going to feel a little weird. And by the way, when I was in grad school, I used to hate when our professors would do mindfulness exercises. I was like, guy who was rolling his eyes. Our teacher would come in and say, everyone seems very stressed right now. I'm feeling a lot of tension in the room. I'm going to turn off the lights and play some relaxing music. Like, no, no, just stop. Don't do that. So if, if you feel weird, if you feel awkward, that's part of it. It's OK. Just fight through it. I promise it gets better and easier every time. I practice this with my patients so much that what was not natural to me has now become natural. If you're able to turn it on, it's a very helpful skill because it's free. You can do it anytime, any place, and very discreetly where no one even knows what you're doing. So we're going to play some nature sounds, just some birds, and I'm not going to give you all the sounds away. All I want everyone to do is just focus on the sense of sound. What do you hear? If you want to close your eyes, that might help. Just notice and identify the sounds in your head. Some people often say, oh, I was thinking about this time I went on this trip, and it was, that's not technically mindful, it's not technically present, because you're not in the moment. Just try and hear the sounds in your head. You will inevitably start thinking about what you have to do when you go home tonight, and that's normal. I'll be doing it along with you, but see how long it takes you to get back to the moment, back to the present, and you say in your head, focus on the sounds. Focus on the sounds. Good motion. How do you feel now? Raise your hand if your level of anxiety went down a little bit from listening to the sounds. There you go. That was about 20 seconds of listening to nature, listening to a YouTube clip. If you are taking a shower, if you're driving, if you are dancing, painting, learning, davening, you could smell a sitter, you could take something out of your pocket and you could just feel it in your hands. You could put a sucking candy or a piece of gum in your mouth or take a drink of water and just focus fully on that sense of taste or that sense of touch. And it has been proven and you've all shown me the more you practice it, the more time you have for mindfulness in your life, you're living in the moment. You take that anxiety monster, that curse of Montauk, of Long Beach, of all those places, and you could give yourself the reality of that. You could be present in the moment to enjoy life. That's my spiel. Thank you so much. We're, we're going to have a um, time after this table around and food. But it's a wonderful event. Thank you for organizing the Shamos. I hope to be back again soon.